Okay, so lastly, we want to follow back up on this notion that uh, the cognitive demons in the system are sitting in the dark. And again, this is very uh, viscerally relevant when you're doing the pandemonium example in the live classroom. Uh, you have people turned around, they can't see the screen, they have no idea what's going on out there in the quote-unquote real world, and, and they're re depending entirely on their lower level feature demons to give them some picture of what's happening in the world. And yet those lower level feature demons, if you think about what neurons are actually listening to, all they hear is spikes. They don't even have language. And this is a really fundamental point. A lot of people think somehow that the brain has a secret code in there that there's like, you know, hey, I'm sending you a message, text, 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 chat, chat, chat. No, neurons just fire these action impulses there is no language in the brain in the way that neurons communicate to each other. They do not have ASCII. They do not have any kind of uh, internationalized uh, Unicode signals that they're sending to each other. It is just impulses, okay? And so you really have to work hard to put yourself in that position and think, what would it be like if all I had was just like blip, 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 You know, it's like, and then I'm getting this signal from thousands of different neurons all at the same time. It's very, very uh, kind of puzzling to think about how neurons actually make any sense of this. And, and we, we, we have these kind of notions that they can kind of, our, our different parts of our brain can kind of peek out and sort of see what's going on out there. But no, they can't. They really can't. They have to depend on each other. And, and so fundamentally, this gives you a really profound understanding of what the neuron is up against, okay? And I think it's even practicing scientists in the field very frequently don't uh, think in these terms and, and kind of mistakenly anthropomorphize the neurons and think that they have some kind of ability to understand what's going on in the world way beyond what they would really because they're just getting these spikes. And so one way to visualize this is in terms of a social network like this, um, where the neurons build up a uh, kind of network of trust over time, just like in social networks. And you know, if you think about your Facebook feed again, or whatever social media you use, um, you get these signals from people and you, and you start to sort of realize over time, oh, that person really sends a lot of crazy stuff. I don't really trust them. This other person, they maybe they don't send too many signals, but when they do, it's always like dead on and really makes sense and you really kind of connect with that person. Um, that's what neurons are doing. Neurons are building networks of trust and, connect and connection because again, that's all they have. They do not have any other way of understanding what's going on in the world except through these kind of, you know, signals, impulses in the dark and, um, and so it's absolutely essential that individual neurons kind of learn who to trust and what, through that process, what kind of signals these inputs are actually telling them. So if I'm trying to be a cognitive demon detecting the letter T, how do I even know that my inputs are, are encoding a vertical and a horizontal line? I don't, right? I can't see the horizontal and vertical line at all, ever. I can't. All I get is bip, 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 and bip, bip, bip. How do I ever put together this information in any sensible way if I don't know what it actually correlates with in the outside world. And this fundamentally is the amazing kind of challenge and the fact that it actually works, we can see it in our computer models, it's, it, it, these neurons are really doing a, a huge uh, job learning to make sense of the world given such a difficult, challenging place operating in the dark, kind of like me right now. One way to think about this in particular is what would happen if like, you know, this previous slide has all people I know, these are all my colleagues from Boulder. Um, I, you know, know what they tend to say in meetings. I know them personally. I know a lot about these people. Uh, I've built up that kind of network of trust and understanding with these colleagues over time. But what if all of a sudden I were to move to Davis? I just did that. Um, and now I have a whole bunch of new colleagues I have to start over again. I have to learn who to trust, who says what, who I can go to for some piece of information. It's a whole new learning process. And what that tells you is that you can't just sort of 
take information in the brain and shuffle it off to some other place in the brain. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to take these neurons and throw some whole new pattern of information at them. They won't know what to make sense of it. Because, again, it's like changing out all the people in your social network. You can't interpret. You don't know what those things mean. Okay, And, and this is fundamentally the problem. If you do not have a lingua franca, if you don't have a common language, then there is no way to kind of take information and ship it to somewhere else in the brain. But how many people do you know that talk about and think about, oh, yeah, we have information in one part of the brain, and the other part of the brain, you know, there's this kind of classic cognitive psychology is all about like these boxes that take information from one part of the brain and move it to another part of the brain, just like you would in a computer. But again, in a computer, you have a language, you have the ASCII code, you have conventions for representing information so that one part of memory can encode and send information to another part of memory, and it makes sense. That does not work in the brain. Okay, so I'm going crazy about this thing because I think it really is important, and it's really striking how people don't really, you know, they anthropomorphize and they don't understand what the neuron is really up against. And maybe you still don't, but I hope you have some appreciation that it really is a very, very challenging problem for individual neurons, and you can't just apply these generic kind of computer metaphors to the brain and think that information is just kind of sent around in the brain. It does not work that way.